The internet is a wonderful thing. And one of the best things you can get from the internet right now is downloading more RAM on your computer. That's something that we've all joked about in the online community. But then when I saw a program called CPU Cores, I thought, can I actually download more cores and more RAM for my computer? All jokes aside, CPU Cores has absolutely nothing to do with tricking you into downloading some kind of a virus. What CPU Cores does do is it tries to take a specific application, such as a game, and it takes all of the threads that that game would be using and it maps them to non-hyper-threaded or non-SMT cores, as well as gives that process a higher priority and lots of other stuff. We're going to examine what all it claims to do and examine if it actually does those things it claims to, because you can't trust ads these days. Of all the processors most likely to benefit from a program such as CPU cores, any first or second generation Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 6 or any 6 core Ryzen 5 would be a prime candidate for this, as well as first gen Ryzen 3 but not second gen Ryzen 3. And here's why. Up here we have our Ryzen 7 example processor. Basically any first or second generation Ryzen processor would look like this any first or second generation Ryzen 5 processor would look like this, first generation Ryzen 3 looks like this, and second generation Ryzen 3 looks like this. So what exactly are these? Well, each of these two pieces is called a CCX, and basically, because AMD can just build multiple CCXs and then just swap them into processors, it helps to keep manufacturing costs down. But one thing it doesn't keep down is the latency when you're trying to move data from one of these CCXs over to the other. That's a bit of a problem there, and something that CPU cores is here to fix. If you're interested about how data moves between these two CCXs, then you should go ahead and check out this other video I have, I think, on this side. I forget how the camera works when it's mirrored like this. But in that video, I explain what Infinity Fabric is and why Ryzen RAM timings, or the clock speed rather, is so important. So go check that video out over there if this is something you're interested in. But moving right along, on this first CCX over here, we have threads zero and one on the first physical core. On the second physical core, we have threads two and three, and you get the idea for all 16 threads here. Now, in terms of what's the real thread versus the hyper-threaded or SMT thread, it actually doesn't matter on Ryzen. Both of them you can think of as hands to the same body. So my body represents a physical core and both of my hands represent threads. As long as you're only using one of those threads and not both for your game, you're getting the full advantage and you're not waiting for this hand to finish before moving over to the other one. So what exactly is CPU cores supposed to do with all of this? Why did I explain all of this? Well, if you're running a heavily multi-threaded application such as 3D rendering or video exporting as I'm doing editing this video 10 minutes from now, you'll be using all 16 threads, so there's really not much you can do there. But if you're running a game that's only using four threads, what if we had CPU cores load up threads one, three, five, and seven, all on this one CCX, so that we don't have to deal with the latency of moving any data between the CCXs, and because we're only using one thread per core, we're getting the biggest benefit out of each of our cores, and we're not waiting on one thread to finish before another begins. While this may seem like just a bunch of techno mumbo jumbo to your average gamer out there, one thing gamers do understand is higher FPS. And so what I'm going to demonstrate now is a couple synthetic benchmarks to show that it does help just from a number crunching standpoint. But we also have identified a couple games with a bit of a CPU bottleneck that don't require too many threads of processing. And we're going to demonstrate that for you as well. So enjoy. Whenever it says four out of four in the game settings, it means I chose this. Whenever it says three out of four, I chose these settings. And lastly, whenever it says CCX override, that's because I locked it to only use the cores on one CCX. Here's what Task Manager looks like in Rise of the Tomb Raider normally. Here's what it looks like when dedicated to specific cores with no SMT. And here's what it looks like using only one CCX. 
And now for the benchmark results. First up is folding at home bench. When doing a DHFR workload, we can see that we did gain a slight increase when using the three out of four and four out of four enhancements. But when it came to using the NAV workload, we actually made performance worse by trying to enhance it. Next up is transcoding video using only the processor with no GPU acceleration. We managed to shave off six seconds, almost 10%, when using three out of four enhancements. And when we locked it to four threads instead of eight, we lost performance as one might expect. When we did GPU accelerated video transcoding, it made not one second of difference. One of my favorite gaming benchmarks is using the pickup truck to drive off a cliff in BeamNG because I think it's a pretty good way of testing soft body physics collisions. And as we can see, using three out of four enhancements was the least helpful. And when we went full CCX lockdown, we got the same performance basically that we started with. So CPU cores doesn't do anything to enhance the gameplay of this game, if all you want to do is drive off a cliff that is. Next up is Claybook. I was surprised just how CPU bottlenecky this title was, and there'll be more on identifying CPU versus GPU bottlenecks in a future video, but needless to say, three out of four enhancements greatly enhanced our frame rate on this title. Even if we did full manual, it didn't seem to hurt us that much. As for Dirt Rally, it really looks as though there's not much you can do with the software to enhance your FPS. And it doesn't even really smooth out the frame times either. Next up is Rocket League Drop Shot. This is a game that's frequently hitting the 250 FPS frame limiter, and we're not really doing much to enhance our gameplay. You may or may not gain one or two FPS out of 200, by putting it all on one CCX, but that's test to test variants. And finally, with Rise of the Tomb Raider, we were able to gain some FPS in basically all of these different enhancement levels, most notably so using three out of four enhancements. This was testing the Soviet installation map repeatedly, not the one that's shown in the background in case anyone was confused but it really did help to smooth things out as well as boost the average, which was nice to see. So to answer the question, will you see a boost in games and productivity software if you buy this piece of software? And the answer is maybe. It depends on the application you're running. In some games, it helps. In some games, it helps a lot. And in other games, it doesn't make any difference at all. Sometimes you'll ruin performance, sometimes you'll gain it. So you're going to have to do a lot of your own testing to see which specific applications and games can actually take advantage of this. If you found this video super helpful, let me know by leaving a comment down in the description. Have you found a game that this is super helpful or unhelpful for? Let me know down below. As always, like, share, subscribe, and check out these other videos. Thank you so much. See you in the next one.